Because of the amazing support that you guys have shown for this run, I am continuing the Castile run with the second bit here. And hey, if we get 7,000 likes in the first week after this bit is route, then we'll do the third part of this 1444 to 1821 campaign that I want to eventually set up, in which we're going to try and get as many achievements as possible as the Castilians slash Spaniards. Also guys, don't forget to subscribe, would really encourage me to make more videos like these in the future. And if you do subscribe, I'm actually going to give you back the swap. I just took when you weren't looking, eh? I'm already feeling all the sweat lords being like, Hello, do you make the wallet joke nine times, bro? Stop! Hey, I got copyrights on that joke, okay? You be quiet right now. Alright, so uh, I'm gonna do something that uh, has been requested in the past with my uh, runs that I haven't been doing as much, and I think that I should be doing because it's actually a great idea. I'm gonna give a proper overview of our current situation as we start this. And speaking of, this save game is available on my Patreon. Link in description if you like to get it for yourself. Also available for channel members, of course. So we're in 1470. We now have... We have uh, four personal union junior partners. Naples, Burgundy, Aragon, and Portugal. We just integrated Navarra, so we have the entirety of the northern bits there. The Portuguese, we've uh, had a pretty serious war against because we had to fight the French. It kind of destroyed my country, but we're slow re slowly recovering from that. And we do need to attack the French again, so we're going to have to get ready for that war whenever the time comes. That being said said we have minus 135 relations with the Portuguese so I'm a little bit worried I need to have my leader survive the 65 year old he has to survive for at least one or two more years for me to bring this below or above zero relations because if it's below when he passes away then we lose the union with Portugal and that's not something we want to have right we also fed Aragon uh, 39 provinces I believe or 40 provinces let me check 39 provinces which means we can integrate them and whenever we do click this button and become Spain we get all of these provinces for ourselves it was not the most optimal provinces I probably should have given them high development provinces not uh, the redevelopment provinces but it's fine we're also trying to be the HRE Emperor so we're improving relations with the electors and once I finish my conquest in North Africa I'm also going to start getting the alliances with the electors right now the current Emperor is uh, Ludwig von II we also managed to get the Burgundian inheritance we have Naples secured and after we've gotten all of North Africa we're gonna start expanding into the Mamluk lands and we're gonna start munching into the Ottomans because in this run the goal is to get the Roman Empire restored alongside form a massive colonial empire via our Portuguese junior partner here they have exploration ideas really important to take note of you need to make sure that uh, Portugal before you PU them has exploration ideas if you PU them and they didn't take exploration ideas they will not take exploration ideas if they already are a junior partner that's really really vital information right there. Also going to save up some money so we can start upgrading Alhambra to level 3 to get that extra 5% admin efficiency which is going to make it easier for us to uh, expand and once we've integrated uh, Aragon we can also get this fort to level 3 which is again going to make it easier for us to expand since we can take more provinces. Our current national ideas are aristocratic but I might switch to something else. I, I would actually love to get the uh, diplomatic ideas again for the uh, minus 20% province war score cost. However I am uh, two techs behind with my diplo tech, so I cannot really afford that. I'm going to stick with the military tech uh, as my first. And then after I unlock uh, admin tech 7, I might go for an admin or a diplo idea group. Another pretty cool thing is that we have 100 prestige, but we're still on the positive. So even though we are capped at 100, we are still able to, you know, not lose any prestige because of the fact that we're a great power, because of the privilege, grand court positions, patronage of the arts, power projection, national epic, and patronage blessing so it is pretty 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 powerful if you ask me having this and speaking of uh, privileges this is what we have given up right now we just revoked the uh, uh, influence of the nobility privilege that the uh, Castilians start with because we managed to get 50% crownland so now we can give the plus one mana privileges which we hadn't given before because we just needed to rush getting the 50% uh, crownlands as soon as possible it did take a little bit longer than expected because uh, the war with the French was a pain but it is there now so we're gonna change some things around here now despite the fact that our aristocratic counselor is pretty decent i'm gonna change it with um, the nobility in the officer core because this offers me a general cost reduction as well as yearly army tradition decay minus 0.5 which is a significant amount it means that we're almost always gonna have really high army tradition which means our units are gonna be significantly stronger and we're gonna get better generals overall also guys i want to point out that uh i've i've gone through the uh, comment section on my my 
uh, more recent videos. I asked you guys to uh, let me know what kind of videos you like to see from the channel and I really appreciate all the feedback. It made me get a better idea of what exactly you would like to see from the channel and I'm gonna encourage you to do the same thing here with uh, this particular video. If you have anything you like me to improve in my videos overall like you, you want me to show you some specific things, you want me to talk about some specific things or anything in the sort, don't hesitate to mention it. I would honestly very much so appreciate it. Also of course if you have any video ideas you like to discuss or you like me to do any cover any videos the comment section is the best spot to be talking about that and we just got found gold and tafulal plus 50 percent uh, goods produce modifier so this is really good we're gonna get this up to 10 production development and with this particular modifier here up until 1570 it's gonna be a massive buff we're also getting our units ready we're gonna be attacking the tunisians and the mamluks because they're allied to each other i don't think i'm gonna be able to co-belligerate them i don't know maybe i'll be able to let's see yeah i don't think they have many uh strong alliances actually well a dull might be an issue actually so yeah maybe you're not gonna go blue trade fine we're gonna be uh in need of uh, two wars with the tunisians anyway since uh, they have more than 100 percent war score they got 153 war score right now we also are able to get a restoration of union on austria whenever we uh want to problem is i got some of the worst rng in this run because the austrians didn't get any of the pus they didn't get the bohemia they didn't get the hungary pu in fact i don't know how but poland managed to get the unions on lithuania hungary and bohemia can someone explain to me what the f is going on here man because i'm not sure what's going on but i don't like it um they do have friendly relations with me so i will likely get an alliance do we have the diplo slots we could change savoy for them yeah i think i'm gonna change savoy for the poles and i can use the poles against the ottomans because i think they're their rivals yes they are that being said it really sucks pp i was really hoping to get the austrians together with hungary as their junior partner because then i would have gotten whatever unions the austrians had as my unions right let's check our aggressive expansion we don't really have much with the catholics so maybe after the tunis war we can enforce our union on the austrians that way we can just wait for the cooldown to go down and uh cooldown to go down for the ae to go down after we've enforced that particular union with austria i guess our gold mine in la mancha is already at 10 production development and we've got the local goods produced plus 10 percent for this entire state as our local organization right now we're not making too much only 43 total income but we're gonna significantly ramp this up as we start diversifying our trade income we start going into the new world and we also start getting more of the area areas in uh, North Africa and Alexandria start munching our way into the Ottomans and even into Italy because we do have a ton of permanent claims in the Italian peninsula. I'm honestly waiting right now for uh, for these guys for Milan to be like a one province minor and once that happens and it looks like they're actually at war with Savoy so that might happen very fast. Once that happens we can attack them because we have the permanent claims on them and then we can just uh, vassalize them and feed them back all of the cores that they lost which would be freaking amazing brother is this how i'm gonna start my freaking second part of the campaign actually with the loan bro come on <laughs> better yet with two freaking loans here uh, to pay that schnapps off who are they at war with just milan uh no provence actually provence is the main war target so they will not be able to fully annex milan that is really great news let's see what their uh interest is they might take two provinces which should be fine with me yeah you know what i think uh milan war is going to be a priority for me before the war against uh the tunisians let's see what we're going to go with next year diplo relations is a no-brainer in my opinion because i do have diplo relation issues and i will have even more diplo relation issues because i have a lot of junior partners and vassals and so on that i'm gonna be having this particular campaign and the peace deal is done they got two provinces left hell yeah baby what the hell happened here did they just proclaim guarantee them they did that's one of the things right like i was not expecting to do a war against milan anytime soon but it just happened and we have to roll ourselves with whatever we've got when it comes to our rng right we're also gonna need to recruit some more units go ahead and get a few unit you know he goes he over here some marines maybe as well Four thousand marines to help us out with some of the landings there you go let's go up to forty thousand for now we will go up to land force limit max once we have more manpower of course for the early part of the campaign i have been relying on uh, mercenaries more than anything else which is obviously the logical thing to do but after military tech 7 you really need to stop relying on mercenaries which is what we're going to be doing after careful consideration i uh i arrived at the conclusion that attacking milan is not bad 
bad, but maybe there's a chance I can diplovasalize them. How is that going to work? Well, I'm going to need to get closer with them because right now the biggest factor is the distance between borders. So what I could do is I could attack Florence instead. And considering that uh, Venice is not helping because they have a malevolent leader and the attitude towards me is amazing. They freaking love me over in Venice for that matter. Because of that, I'm going to get Lance closer to Milan. Now I need to be careful not to get Lance that they have a vital interest in such as Luca. Maybe Pisa would work. Mm. I think it's worth a try. I think it's a hundred percent worth a try. Let's go for this. Let's Gucci von Strombucci here. I'm going to call in the Pope so I can uh, give the Pope some provinces and let's attack Yes Maximus. Bring our units by the border there. Siege down the capital. Make sure we are the ones that takes uh, Pisa before the Pope uh, manages to bring their units there and Luca for that matter. Let's see. I'm not sure which one I'm going to take to be honest. Good thing we have so many junior partners because uh, all of the rebellions we're getting in North Africa, we're getting our uh, PUs to get rid of them, obviously. We don't need to stress about those ourselves right now. Leaving us all the time in the world to focus on uh, the Florence and perhaps the Milan War if we cannot diplovasalize. So let's see. I'm honestly still very hopeful that I will be able to get that diplovasalization on them. Oh, sneaky Florentines. They're trying to siege down my PU's uh, capital. Cannot let that happen, sir. I apologize, but uh, that capital is uh, holy land and you better go schnapple dupe yourself because we're not going to let you take that. If it falls at 21, I'll be really pissed. It didn't. Okay. Everything is fine. Everything is fine. <laughs> and there you go. Little old uh, Burgundy decided to uh, suicide its armies into that schnapps. Uh, not sure how those units were that bad, but okay. Look at that. 5.6 morale compared to their 3.7. That is what I call supremacy over the trooper lords. There you go. All right, cool. We won. The war is in our bag, essentially, right now. Um, we're gonna maybe give Arezzo to the Pope. Might even make them really loyal towards us. There you go. Exactly what I was saying. Uh, we need to upgrade this two times. Sure. I mean, okay. So here's what we're gonna do, lads. We're gonna give this out to the Pope. We're gonna take this for ourselves. And we're also gonna take trade power, war reps, and a little bit of money. Uh, that should be it. How much of a coalition are we getting? Tunis and Tafilal. So that means basically no coalition with nations within um, the Italian peninsula. So we're also gonna try and get the alliance with Milan before the month passes so that we don't um, lose the chance to get that alliance because of the vital interest that they have in uh, Luca. Now, we just need to get the royal marriage then technically on paper, we should have what we need to get the diplovasalization over them. Let's see if it's actually like that, though. So we're going to have to wait until the 14th when um, when we can get that royal marriage with them. Now is the moment of truth. Can we or can we not? We can! 56-54. Oh, my lord. We're just going to get literally 150 development for free from diplovasalizing Milan. This is what I like to call, boys, massive brain, okay? This is huge brain because we don't need to waste that aggressive expansion in North Italy. We can do it in uh, Austria and then whilst we wait for the AE to go down we can continue our expansion into North Africa I might as well just attack the Austrians now since I'm close by right what kind of alliances they have doesn't matter because we can get the Poles in so that's like 200,000 on our side holy mother that is going to be a world war though so let's bring all of our troops over to the Italian peninsula then and let me actually do that after I diplovasalize Milan maybe just to be on the safe side holy mother Venetian conquest of Ferrara part number three all right Venice is really trying to unify Italy, aren't they? Uh, I'm not sure I'm gonna let you do that, Venice. That seems a little bit against my particular wishes, you know? And now let's check Milan. 190. There you go. Diplo Vasola Sonos. We got that because we, aside from improving relations, we gave out military access, insulted their rivals, etc, etc. It's fairly easy to boost up your relations with someone, send them gift and so on. It sucks that we're not getting more than one PU, but it's fine. One PU is better than no PUs, right? Let's see. We're gonna have to fight Baden, Salzburg, Siena, Mainstedt, Goslar and Berg. So basically most of the HRE, isn't it? Yeah. Also, our leader is not yet dead, but I kind of want him dead though. And all of our guys here have above zero relations. So let's kill him off. Losing a little bit of prestige and so on, but we're getting Isabel de Trastamar, which is an absolute beast. Boom, boys. Boom, boom, boom. Schnack a -doo doom Oh, Sienna's sieging this down. Uh, okay. Let's see the map mode. Let's go to the map mode. Uh, I'm gonna need military access from you, Pope. Thank you very much. And my plan to make this war as, uh, as quick as possible 
possible is to attack the Allies first, not the Austrians. So I just pieced out Siena by destroying their army and uh, starting to siege the capital and blockading them. I'm gonna piece out Baden, everybody else here next, and then afterwards I'll start focusing on the actual Austrian units. But that being said, it's likely that my uh, Polish allies will do a lot of the heavy lifting here and siege a lot of Austria whilst I'm busy with the uh, HRE minor nation. Which is why it's a great thing to have good allies when you go into war, right? And apparently the Austrians are making all the bad decisions. All right, we've wiped out a ton of their units. I feel like sieging down these two provinces in Baden and starting to siege the capital down is going to be enough to uh, to get a white piece with them. Let's see if I'm correct. As always, I'm wrong. Okay, I'm wrong. That was, I, I was going to say as always I'm correct, but um, apparently I was not correct on that one. That's a little bit embarrassing right there, not gonna lie. Uh, that's just a tiny little bit embarrassing. Seems like we might need to actually kill off their army before we piece these bad boys out. Ooh, there's a blob of most of the enemy alliance sieging down the capital. Well, not the capital, the city of Anvers here. However, looks like Mines is significantly more willing to, to piece me out without even having taken their capital yet, which is extremely juicy. Go ahead and siege down uh, the Emperor's capital up next. And you want to give me some money? You want to give me 12.8 ducats? I will take take your ducats and put them right up my, my pockets. You thought I was gonna say something else, didn't you? I would never say such a thing, except my pockets. That's the only thing I would say, sir. Maybe since we're sieging down the capital of Baden, we can take some more stuff from them. Maybe even cancel some of their alliances. Do they have alliances? They have one alliance. Two alliances. Okay, well, Austria's not gonna matter because um, we're gonna vassalize them. So we're gonna take the prestige. We're gonna get how much of that? 4.8 prestige. That's fine. We need to get back to 100 as soon as possible. We also should probably stab up whilst we're at it now. I know what you're thinking. You should have just waited for the 70 year old to pass away. But if he didn't pass away by the age of 70, he's gonna take his time. So I'd rather not have, um, you know, to wait for another four years before before he passes away. Imagine I get the union with Austria and then he passes away right after I get the union. That would be so disappointing to me, man. I wouldn't I wouldn't want to do that. Not to fear citizens of Anvers, the relieving force of the great Spaniards is here to tax you extra for having to relieve you. What? Also, can we take a moment to appreciate the fact that the city of Durlash sounds like something from World of Warcraft? Isn't there like a orc town, Durlash, Durlok, something like that? I I'm pretty sure there is. I'm 100% sure that's a World of Warcraft reference right there. Oh no, it's Durothar, I think, right? It might be Durothar and not Durline. So as I was looking around my empire, I noticed something extremely disappointing. Uh, for some reason, the city of uh, Tafulalt has 97.2 autonomy. That means that this city is getting basically no income to my country. So it's a useless province. I'm going to lower the autonomy after the war because I probably forgot to lower the autonomy. Um, but yeah, just saying that is extremely, extremely disappointing. Didn't expect that to be the case there at all. The goal is always to have as close to zero as possible your autonomy, not the other way around. So, um, Austria is just the two of us left now, and by two of us, I mean you and basically half of freaking Europe fighting against you. <laughs> but hey, it's fine. You you still have Sal Salzburg on your side. You you still have... It's it's equal chances, bro. Who knows what how this is gonna end, right? This year shows that uh, you never know how wars are gonna end up, right? So, Siena attacked uh, Firenze, and I'm not sure why. Okay, that's actually not a bad air. Five, four, six. I'll take it. Hell, I'll take it. Not Juan. His name's gonna be Tremorp. Tremorp, in fact, is a typical Castilian name, in case you were ever wondering. It's uh, totally a Castilian name. Yeah, I was gonna say, though, that the Siena attacked Firenze, and they ended up being the ones that are gonna get freaking annexed by Firenze here, which is pretty ironic, right? The moment of truth is here. Let's see how much aggressive expansion we got now. So, we've gotten a fuck ton of aggressive expansion. That is fine. We're not gonna be expanding in Europe anymore afterwards so it's a-okay we just managed to secure our union over the Hostrians we got pretty much most of the hard to get European bits for the Roman Empire only exception is uh, we just need the French lands and that's pretty much it in North uh, North uh, Italy but for example what we can do here is we can return core by favors with our allies and guess what we should be able to ally these guys not anymore because of the opinion drop oh that sucks bold oh man I was gonna just attack them I was gonna use my favors with uh, Venice to return that snaps. Now I gotta attack him. Oh, I do be like that unfortunately. It's fine. I'm not gonna attack him now though, because uh, I need to focus on other stuff. I'm gonna be going with my armies to North Africa, and we're gonna be doing that juicy Tunisian war I was talking about a while back. Brother, we are slowly but surely running out of diplo relation slots, so I'm gonna need to do something about that. But, before we do anything, let's go with this uh, juicy Tunisian war. Holy war for that matter. So we're gonna even call in Zepop. 
I'm also gonna go Belligerate the Mamluks. Screw it, bro. Even though I have to fight the extra, what is it, like 8,000 more units from Adal? It is not the end of the world. Uh, far from it. And getting Tunisian lands and maybe a little bit of the Mamluks is gonna bring us one step closer towards um, restoring that juicy Roman Empire. I think I'm gonna go like this, actually. Here's why, right? I could get Jerusalem, which is gonna give me the second missionary that I really need. And this coalition is actually going to be significantly less because these are all European nations, most European nations and they're not gonna care about me taking these lands. For the Tunisians, probably I'm gonna go for something like this to prevent them from actually raiding me again. So essentially just getting the coastline, maybe making them a little bit of an enclave within my lands like this. Yeah, that might work. It's a little bit extra aggressive, ex I'm not aggressive expansion, the thing I'm worried about most is the fact that it costs a lot of admin points. So um, let's see, we'll figure it out. We might just take this in the next war, I don't know. I'm curious what you guys think. If you were in my situation, what would you go for first? Would you go for or, uh, this part in North Africa or would you go for something like this and then we could take uh, one province from here Syria release Syria and feed it back all of its cores afterwards. You know what, now that I think about it, I feel like taking Syria would likely be the better option, even though we wouldn't take Jerusalem, or we could just make something like this, and then we would not have our lands connected, but we would have both Jerusalem and Syria. Seriously though, how would you guys handle this? I'm really, really curious. Let me know in the comment section. If you were in my shoes, what you would do. Yeah, we do have a little bit of a problemos here. Uh, we have gotten a coalition. It's basically most of South Germany and North Italy here. Um, I don't think it will trigger and even if it does trigger i'm fairly confident we can win against them but that being said i need to be extremely careful now it might actually need to get some mercenaries to finish this war against tunis and uh, the mamluks a little bit faster i'm really thinking about getting some mercenaries right now especially if i find someone with really decent uh, siege pips hmm. or just a grand company maybe because i don't want to waste too much of my manpower right now and i definitely will need more troops to fight against mamluks which have fifty thousand units as it is all right, we seem to have trapped the Tunisian army here and we oh my god look at that difference 3.2 against 5 point freaking 8 brother That is just a redonkulous right there if you ask me absolutely redonkulous and that's a stack wipe for the Tunisians after we've fully sieged down Tunis We're gonna have to push for the Mamluks I'm, I'm worried that they're gonna give me unconditional surrender in which case uh, I'm gonna have to Really push for the Mamluks or I'm gonna die to freaking war exhaustion destroying my country, right? Oh, and we got reinforced royal authority a juicy Dev cost reduction, autonomy change, reform progress. I love it. Next, we can do a law and order, and we get until the end of the game monthly reform progress and government uh, cost reduction in Granada. So, um, that's not too difficult. We could do that actually. Expand infrastructure once in both of these provinces. Let's go for it. Wait, we don't have. Oh, it needs to be 15 development. Okay. I mean, in that case, we just improve it three times. We don't even need to do much more than that, do we? One, two, three, and again. One, two, three. There you go. Be able to do this mission. Hail to the yes boys all right we got two more missions done operation tunisian bagel Dube is done uh i'll let portugal finish off the capital and then we've got all the stuff that we need to have from here now let's go ahead and focus a hundred percent on mamluks even if i don't manage to get this at the very least i want to start munching into the uh, tripolitanian lands and uh get my one province here in uh, saida and jerusalem right so that's 60 percent war score which i personally find to be extremely doable whilst we're handling this war in in, uh, North Africa, we're also improving relations with the various electors here, or not electors, sorry, various uh, HRE nations that are in the coalition. We need to get 50 relations on the positive with them to get them out of the coalition with us. So let's do exactly just that right now. Once we have at least three or four of the bigger guys out, the rest of the coalition members will leave the coalition by themselves, so it's just going to dissipate. And thanks to our beloved Aragonese, we almost got the Siege of Alexandria done, so that is amazeballs. Let's also try and wipe out their fleet so that we don't need to stress about them having any sort of a naval supremacy in these lands. Because, let's face it, the Mediterranean belongs to the Castilian crown, doesn't it? Of course it does. A mere 300 days and now we can start pushing in towards the rest of these lands. Uh, why am I keep getting dog shit generals is my question up next. Because I got pretty high freaking army tradition and I'm getting the worst imaginable freaking generals here. What is up with that? Seriously, dog game. Seriously, dog game. You guys ever have this where you got like eight? 
180 army tradition and you're getting a dog shit 1111 dude. What? Why is that happening? Why? <laughs> I'm tired of waiting for my uh, economy to go up by itself. I'm just going to take a loan so I can start upgrading Alhambra. The sooner I get this done, the better. We need to get it to level 3 in order to get the admin efficiency. And it's going to take a while, both financially and uh, time-wise, right? The Mamelukian fleet must be very desperate right now. They've been trying to hide from me and I've been unseaging every single province in which they've been retreating in <laughs> to the point where they went from like 30 something ships to just seven ships remaining <laughs> I've essentially been bullying the Mamluks fleet, guys. That's uh, pretty much exactly what happened here. All right, we got Cairo and we got nations leaving the coalition against us. So that is amazing. Let's continue to improve relations with the other ones that have not yet left the coalition against us, but will after we get the 50 relations. So because we have our units really close to areas that we haven't yet discovered, I'm going to go ahead to my neighbors here and I'm going to ask them to give me the knowledge of these areas. So say Arabia, I can get from Karakoyunlu, Dariago, and so on maybe from Haas I can get some more or maybe from Karakayunlu more yes I can apparently 11th of February that works for me I love to discover all of these lands if that's possible of course here you go Augsburg's out of the coalition against us too let me actually transfer my units over back to Castile with the ships because that's going to be significantly faster we got to get rid of these rebels over here of course and I just looked at the camera and I realized I've been having my bold spot in plain view everybody knows I'm going bold that's right boys it's it's pretty bad it's uh actually pretty bad I got like on both sides. I'm gonna be one of those dudes that's got like a little bit of hair in the middle and like nothing on the sides. Hey man, it is what it is. Nothing I can do. It's nature. It is what nature is, okay? Luckily enough, I managed to fish my wife. So I, I, I managed to catch a fish, a good fish even. So uh, hopefully she doesn't, you know, leave me when I get bold. Fingers crossed. I actually have the war score I need to do the piece with the Mamluks, but I'm just gonna continue to uh, get knowledge of uh, maps from Karakoyunlu before I do the peace deal so I can actually um you know i can see more of the world for future warfare i think that's gonna be it when it comes to uh, discovering new provinces because i lo i lost a lot of prestige i need to get this back up to 100 so yeah once i get it back to 100 i will just uh request uh maps from other countries afterwards right so clearly i'm gonna go for this but that's not everything i'm also gonna do this so i get access to medina after because by taking medina wait was it mecca or medina i think it was mecca wasn't it well i'll take take Medina and then I'll take Mecca in the next war against the uh, Mamluks and then I get my third missionary once that's done. Can we get some money from them as well maybe? 900 ducats? Hell yeah baby! What the snaps? Alright, that's gonna be it. 193, 196 and almost no coalition. I'm pretty okay with uh, what, what coalition we have so far actually. Bring these boys back here. They're gonna be black flagged and nations are leaving the coalition against us which is exactly what I was hoping would happen. Bring the rest of these bad boys over there as well. Mamluk's no longer a valid rival. Oh, I forgot to humiliate them. Well, I mean, I should not have forgotten to humiliate, but it's okay. It's not the end of the world, boys. It is not the end of the world. All right, now I'm going to core up everything except the province that I'm going to be releasing uh, Syria from, namely Sidon. Let's go ahead with uh, Jaffa, Cree, and uh, Gaza, and everything else here. And let's figure out what we want from the Tunisians, because we're kind of lagging behind with our admin points right now. We're only getting 13 monthly admin which is not optimal pay off the loan that we had as well noise and looks like the coalition has fully dissipated now that we've uh, we've managed to get some of these bad boys out of it so that means the rest of them just decided it is not worth for them to stay in it as such no more coalition and they're below 50 ae threshold which means they cannot rejoin the coalition if they want to in the future of course there are some exceptions to this the ottomans might be able to because they got 78 aggressive expansion and the venetians which means that i'm gonna have to attack the venetians and now for my reconquest of my course here before um, they join another coalition. I mean, it's not really priority actually because you need five nations, right? I don't think there is five nations that would join a coalition right now. So because Adalan is, is in this war, I'm not able to get all of the provinces here, but uh, I could take the coastline for now and a little bit of money and that should be A-OK -okay, actually. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. Maybe I can cancel their alliance with the Mamluks, but if I do that, it's highly likely that they will get an alliance with the Ottomans. They're they're not getting the alliance with the Ottomans now because the Ottomans and the Mamluks are rivals, so they are not able to ally the a nation that uh, you know is a rival of one of their allies. So that's why I'm gonna let them keep the alliance with the Mamluk. That's definitely the right play here. Let me check my overextension. 51%. I would be up to uh, I would be over 100 by a little bit. Because mm, I'm gonna have to wait for a while then before 
right piece out. I'd have to wait for three freaking years. You know what? No, I'm gonna do this. This is extremely unorthodox, but uh, by doing this, I get less overextension and this is pretty cheap land to core as well. Only 265 plus. Most importantly, I have a truce with the Tunisians, so they're not actually able to raid my coastline because of that truce, even though they have access to the coast. And in the next war, I'll just fully annex what's left of them. So it's not really the end of the world. It's fine. Now you bastards are Tunisian noble rebels, so you better go back to Tunis before I get actually angry with you. And now we're gonna have to chill. We got 93 overextension, so we really need to calm down for a few moments, smell the roses, regroup up our troops, and get ready for the wars that we're gonna have in uh, the Italian peninsula up next. Holy mother, Poland is absolutely raffle stomping everybody in Eastern Europe. They're at war with the Teutons, or what's left of the Teutons, I think. Wait, no, what are they at war with? No, they're at war with the Muscovites directly, Golden Gun. Oh my lord, they're gonna be taking a buttload of land from the uh, Muscovites then. Finally, we managed to get radical reforms. I've been trying to get this freaking event from the beginning of the freaking campaign. <laughs> Fired my advisors, and now we can get this bad boy, and we can hire them back once we get the money. Apparently, we don't have the money for that, but we can get this technology, so that is a Jouce. Foreign wisdom, don't mind if I do. Wait, uh, when's my truce expiring with these guys? Expiring in a few months, actually. Okay, let's uh, get our units by the border in that case. They have no allies, so it's going to be fairly easy to wipe them out. What's left of them here? They're giving me a run for my money, quite literally, because they're running away from me, so I have to catch them up wherever they're going. But luckily enough, them going to Ifni was a death sentence for their armies. Okay, we're getting up there, boys. We went up to 28 ducats uh, as positive balance, so that's really not bad. Plus, now we have military tech 7, so we can get cannons. That's going to really speed up our wars in the nearby future. So I'm going to make sure that uh, all of my armies have at least four cannons for the time being, and we're just going to add more of these as we progress in the campaign. Holy mother, that's a lot of cores that uh, Tafilalt had. But hey, that means one less nation to potentially join coalitions against us, and just an overall annoying little OPM that uh, I'm pretty glad that we managed to get a hold of. Also going to need more governing capacity, so I'm going to give the plus 100 governing capacity privilege for the uh, clergy for the time being. When we need more, we'll give the ones for the burghers and the nobility as well. Jesus, man, I'm getting rebels left and right. On the one hand, it's not the worst thing ever because uh, getting all these rebels now means that I don't need to deal with them when the war starts with the English and the uh, Venetians. So that's pretty good, actually, when I think about it. Just have some uh, Mozabites, Socians, and Tripolitanians I need to deal You know what I'm going to do? Screw it. He's going to provoke these bastards. There you go. Provoke them, take them out now so we don't need to worry about it later. I'm going to do the same with the ones in the south here in Sus, and then we can do the war with Venice. Holy snap, 700 Ducatin, you say? Don't mind if I do, sir. I invested all my money now in uh, barracks, which is going to significantly increase the amount of manpower we're going to have after these barracks are finished building. All right, let me check my aggressive expansion map mode. It is uh, juicy, as I like to say, and it's time to attack the Venetians. Let's go. Which one's the highest development? That would be, I'm guessing, Milano, definitely. So let's make Milano the war target. Colon the Poles, colon the Pope, and this is going to be an actual freaking a bloodbath here. I'm talking full on bloodbath. Look at the map mode. It's basically Venice and a few OPMs with England against literally half of Europe and most of North Africa. <laughs> and most of Italy as well, for that matter. Firenze just got its ass kicked and we wiped the floor with them, but they still don't want to give up. Scumbags, actual freaking scumbags. Gonna cancel their alliances maybe after somebody uh, is gonna, you know, attack them and wipe them out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at you, Sienna. This is your moment to shine right there. Don't mess it up like the last time you tried to attack him, okay? I also can get the uh, claims on most of the English crown, but I'm gonna wait because the mission that I have here says that if I do this mission, the Spanish Armada, whenever they're a heretic religion, that means when they go Anglican, then I get a union restoration on them. So I'll wait for them to unify the British Isles and then I can get my union on them, which is just absolutely mind-blowing. <laughs> The amount of unions we can get at this as, a, as the uh, Castilians really shows that they are actually the best personal union nation right now, even better than the Austrians. Oh, 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 oh. I can call in Savoy. Savoy! Go for it. Let's go for it. Let's see what kind of interest they have. They have an interest in Pavia. But what I'm thinking is I give them Pavia so I don't get the AE for that, and then I return Pavia to my vassal with the return favors interaction. It's probably going to be like 4 AE or 3 AE since it's a core, but I don't care, okay? 
it's still cheaper, right? I feel like I also don't really need to do much because my multiple allies and vassal swarm and PU swarm and everything is just doing all of the heavy lifting for me. Let's also try and defeat the Venetian fleet. Maybe we can capture some of their ships in the process, right? And I got my ass kicked. Okay, I mean, didn't pay attention and I got my actual ass kicked. Uh, well, looks like we need to rebuild our fleet now, boys. Uh, yeah, uh, the lesson learned, you need to actually pay attention to what's going on in naval battles as well, not just non-naval battles. Hey, look at that. Siena did take advantage of it and they have attacked uh, Florence. Juicy, juicy. Love seeing the AI basically play into my schemes is what I'm saying here. All right, let's see how much. So Pavia is going to be roughly 2.6 aggressive expansion. Should I even bother to give it to Savoy and Aspac for favors? 2.6. Mm, I'll think about it. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. Let's see. Best part is we can do this and now core creation cost is 25% cheaper. Plus we get an extra one missionary and we can actually convert stuff now because before we couldn't because uh you know sunni provinces are not the easiest ones to convert and we've got basically only sunni provinces we conquered in north africa i'm also going to start my golden era since uh starting it around the late 1400s is in my opinion the best time it helps out so much with uh, getting ideas with getting everything else which begs the question why didn't i click this and then get the ideas that would have been uh like 40 admin and 40 military cheaper just goes to show i make mistakes so too i'm human i'm only human i totally wasn't spawned on the planet of smorgidongs that's, that's not something that uh this is not even a real planet in the alpha centauri system it's not guys totally not well, the English did some uh, successful naval invasions. Foreshadowing the battles of uh, Dunkirk of the future. Mm, maybe, maybe no. But they don't have cannons. Oh, no, they do have cannons. What? Holy shit, they got military tech 7 already. How about the French? They also got military tech 7. Ooh, okay. Go ahead and do our peace deal with uh, Trento. Their army composition is surprisingly good for what AI usually goes for. It's a little bit better than mine, to be fair. So I'm going to need to uh, outnumber them when I'm fighting him them here in that case. Got to take this city back and then we're going to push back the English. I have to piece them out though and they have a much bigger fleet than me because I lost most of my ships So I'm not sure how I'm gonna piece them out and I have to figure out how I'm gonna do a naval landing somehow Oh, what the hell Portugal managed to land in Venice. What when how I got so many questions right now Although it's it's mostly just when and how that that's pretty much the only two questions I got and you guys just got snapple dupe Arrivederci, English troopers. Let's see if um, if uh, that's going to be enough to make him piece us out. Probably not, though. 334. Definitely not. <laughs> Even though they lost most of their army. These Englishmen can be quite stubborn. Improve relationen. We cannot run for the HRE electoral ship, uh, emperor ship now because we have a female on the throne. But eventually, once we get a male heir, we're going to be able to. Once we get a male on the throne, that is. And I almost forgot we do have an heir on the throne. Schmorp. Schmorp the Great, for that matter. Wait, when did Venice get the islands from the Genoese? What? Oh, boy. Okay. Well, whatever the case, I am going to definitely uh, be taking some of these lands from my because I'm gonna need them when I attack the Ottomans. But maybe I'll take the islands that they have here as well as something to release here and feed back afterwards. Is there any cords of anybody juicy here? I mean, Croatia's fairly juicy, right? Serbia. Oh, definitely Serbia. We're gonna take Atado for sure. Yeah, let's change that over to our control. Oh, it's Papal. Come on, Pope. Seriously, the one province I wanted, bro. This is so unfair right now. Oh, 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 we did it. We did the thing. We wiped out the English Navy. Well, the trade part of the English Navy anyway okay 1539 what if we blockade more of their lands are we gonna be able to piece them out then 1644 ongoing battle wait what where Ooh. okay so I reinforce that quickly there we go come on maybe we can piece them out by blockading their coastline because they got quite a little bit of coastline right they got 29 ships left we got to be careful I'm gonna send some of my units in the north maybe I'll just do a cheeky naval invasion to piece out the English quickly dude we are so close right now 2225 come on man who what else do I need to blockade maybe if I uh, blockade this bit here in Donegal Bay. Or actually, I just need to wait for a couple more months, don't I? And then eventually they will by themselves uh, peace out. Where's the battle again? Yeah, as long as it's not a naval battle, I am okay with it. If it's just, okay, it's a naval battle, but it's in the south. It's fine. No! 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 I didn't pay attention! No! They're gonna crush me. No! I should have paid attention. No! No, 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 you English scumbags. Oh! 
I don't want to lose my fleet. This is bad. This is really, really bad. Come on, everybody reinforce right now. <laughs> reinforce. I made a, I may have made a mistake by uh, dividing my fleet like that. Should have probably waited for a little bit longer, shouldn't I? Now I got to build up my fleet again. This is like the third time I lost a fleet in um, the dumbest way imaginable for that matter. So we did wait a few extra years, but it was worth it because now we can do that peace deal with the English. We can even get some money from them. We can get 185 ducats. I'm genuinely okay with that. Probably could have gotten more if we uh, blockaded more of their coastline, but it's fine. All right, now let's do the main peace deal here with uh, the Venetians. And what is this? Even? So now when it comes to the peace deal, I decided not to transfer Pavia to Savoy because even though I get two aggressive expansion less by getting this uh, afterwards with the favors, it would cost 22% war score instead of 11 because Savoy is not a, one of the main nations, right? So for, from their perspective, it would be double the cost to get this province. So I would be essentially cucking myself out of more provinces that I could take, say, in here, the islands, because I really want to get all of the islands here. And that would be perfect. 99% war score. There you go. Juice of on Shuji juice. That's what I uh, like call that uh, little interaction. And now we can also start integrating uh, these bad boys alongside coring up all of the lands in um, in the Aegean Sea. Oh, Poland wants my sailors. Don't mind if I do. Sure, you can have all of them. I'm also going to start upgrading this monument since at level 3 this offers trade efficiency plus 10%, global trade power and caravan power plus 33%. So it is, in my opinion, one of the greatest monuments if you want to have a trade empire, essentially. And hey, we can reestablish the Kingdom of Jerusalem should we want to and even play as them should we want to. But do I want to? Uh, the answer to that is going to be no. No, I don't. I'm sorry, Jerusalem. I love you, but but I'm good. Okay, so now that we've got a level 3 treasurer and all the other prerequisites here, we can do reform the treasury. This is going to give for the next 20 something years inflation reduction, global trade power, and most importantly, Isabel gets one admin forever, which is really, really juicy. We can also do a new capital. We just need to have in, uh, we either need to wait for the event, uh, Solo Madrid es Corte, or we can just improve our capital 12 times, expand infrastructure, and have either state house or five buildings. So it's not been improved much, but it's only 15 to improve it once. So if we do this, it's only going to cost us very little to improve it, which I feel like might actually be the, the best choice here. Maybe let's see. Also, five buildings is not too difficult at all. Nine. There you go. That's 12 times. So now we just need what else? We need expand infrastructure once. All right. Boom. And five buildings. So let's get, get this going. Or better yet, let's get this going in there. It's also time to release uh, Syria since we can start feeding them back their cores now. We have finished the truce with the Ottomans. I mean, the Mamluks. So that's a lot of juicy cores we're going to do in the next war in a few months because we also need to wait for the Tunisian truce to finish so we can attack and fully annex Tunis in the same war. Oh, we got Holy Sea Politics. Completely forgot about this particular mission. It's going to give us one admin development in every province that has a cardinal. So that should be around how many? Let's see. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven or eight uh, cardinals. But not bad. I have to say not bad at all. We can also do this because we have a little bit of a corruption issue. We can get rid of that, I guess. And I know what you're thinking. Why are you not trying to become the Korea controller? Brother, I've been trying since the start of the freaking campaign, okay? It's just not working. I got 60% chance at one point, and England, which had like a 4 freaking percent chance, got it. So screw this freaking game and their Korea controller, okay? That's what I think about that. The fact that it's so freaking RNG, it pisses me off sometimes. Resilience of our people. Uh, okay. Not sure if that's a specific... Okay. I got one stability, now they want me to lose one... Uh, come on, dude. Really? What is up with these events, bro? <laughs> Alright, we got the new capital done. Boom shakalaka. So we got 6 development and paper is now being produced in Toledo. Hot diggity dongalong. I don't need to do this anymore though, so we're gonna have to cancel that. Now in order to get the system of councils, which is a unique Castilian slash Spanish government reform for tier 1, which is really, really powerful, we need to have 50% land owned by the crown. Uh, and it's gonna give us diplomatic relations plus 2, admin skill plus 1 for monarch, allow privilege uh, to be revoked regardless of loyalty and influence and the uh, council mechanics abilities, which we don't have obviously right now. We have right now 38% crownlands. We just need to seize a little bit more crownlands, I guess. We are almost there. Realistically, I could have gotten this a lot earlier if I didn't get the plus one mana privilege for the estates and I rushed for these missions before uh, giving those privileges. I could have done that. I just didn't think about it too much, to be honest. Okay, time for the another war with the Mamluks. This is going to be significantly easier than the last one. Said Damascus is the war target. Kobolid Ray Tunis and maybe Medina. Medina would also bring in who? Uh, Makuria. I don't really care about Makuria too much. So sure, we're going to Kobolid them too. All right, calling the Pope, and that is it. Let's go to 
Warius Maximus. And of course, we're going to prioritize getting the Tunisians out. We can fully annex them very easily. And it's very little aggressive expansion. And the best part is they only have 3,000 units. So it's literally a cakewalk. <laughs> I'm going to have to keep my units a little bit closer to each other. I would like to not lose that many soldiers in this war because I want to go to war with the French after this. And I'm going to need all the units I can muster for that particular engagement. That being said, we already have all of Tunis. So the units that we were using here, we can start sending off to the Mameluk flank. All right. So I know what you're thinking. Uh, why are you canceling course for the Tunisians? Hear me out. Okay. Hear me out. Some people, you know, they have fun by going out on a date. They have fun by just spending time with friends. I have fun by revoking the cores of my fallen enemies. Okay. That's just one thing about me. That's just, that's how I enjoy life. Really. I love this man. We already doubled our income. And after we uh, finish this war in the Middle East, we're going to triple it with the expansion and with the trade companies that are going to give us more merchants that we can use slowly making our way towards a production slash trade economy rather than a taxation one holy city is uh down and the next holy city is going to be in the peace deal with the mammoth it's going to look a little bit like this we're going to take mecca and maybe try and connect these lands apparently we cannot then we'll just take the desert provinces that works for me too and we'll connect the lands in the next war against them and we've taken their last uh, fortification in jafan jazan so that means we can do the peace deal uh let's bring this guy back kind of wondering if i should just take some money actually because um i could potentially take a lot of money from them but nah it's fine i'll just take a little bit of ducats that i could take up to a thousand ducats oh man nope nope we're taking the lands lands are more important because lands are going to allow us to expand our reach significantly and we can unify the roman empire faster that way as well now it's time to get rid of the rebels that have been accumulating whilst we were at war 1501 and we've gotten massive swathes of land i'd say about 80 percent of the provinces that we need in order to restore the roman empire since they've changed how that works now and i'm having a ton of fun with this run so i really hope you guys are going to leave that like so we can continue it hey until the next time check out this awesome a Brandenburg video. And I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers. I would not be able to do this without all your support.